Good day, future RMTs. Welcome to the discussion of our topic today, which is National Blood Services Act of 1994. Our learning outcomes are as follows. Number one is to recall the provisions of RE 7719 in relation to the practice of the profession. And of course, analyze the legal issues and concerns related to the law, which is RE 7719. Before I proceed, I am going to discuss two laws in this topic. One is RA7719. To start with, I would like you to know that there is what we call blood, uh, Philippine Blood Coordinating Council. This is an organization that aims to disseminate correct information to the public regarding the benefits of blood donation. It also aims to motivate different sectors to donate blood voluntarily. And of course, to educate medical and paramedical personnel regarding the proper utilization of blood. This organization is the one that gives training seminars and workshops to all medical technologists in what we call total quality management of blood procedures. Okay. Uh, it, also, it also aims to promote the use of blood component as a therapy. Remember guys that, that blood transfusion is considered as a therapy most especially in cases of severe blood loss. Let's say, for example, during operation, during uh, uh, birth delivery, or excessive blood loss due to accident. Okay? Philippine Blood Coordinating Council, or commonly referred as PBCC, aims to promote uh, interchange of concepts and experiences in blood donation and of course, to improve the blood banking procedures and policies in the Philippines. Now, like what I've said, I'm going to discuss two laws this, uh, in this video. One is Republic Act 1517. Republic Act 1517 is an act regulating the collection, processing, and sale of human blood and establishment and operation of blood banks and blood processing laboratories. I want you to inform that this law is intended for prevention of the trafficking, trafficking of human blood and its products as well as its derivatives. This law 1517, RA 1517, aims to stop you know, the selling of blood, aims to promote voluntary blood services, a vo voluntary donation of the blood. Because there was a time in the Philippine history or there was a time in the context that people are donating blood because of the monetary, monetary a benefit that they can get in collecting blood, in donating blood. That's why every time that they will collect blood, that they will earn money. That's why they are encouraged to do the blood donation, to donate their, their blood. No? But that is, un that is unlawful. That is not appropriate. Because if they will give their blood every week, no, it can lead them to loss in the red cells. Thus, it will require them not to do or to undergo blood transfusion. Because in a normal body, no, in a normal physiological state, no, our red cells, lifespan of red cells is every 120 days approximately three no? months bago tayo, bago makapag-regenerate ang ating blood. That's why this law aims to stop the commercial selling of blood for monetary purposes. Section 2 of the law define what is blood, what is person, and what is a cost. Okay, when we said blood, that is a human blood, you know, that, is, that can be uh, processed or unprocessed, okay, which includes its products and derivatives. When we said products of the blood, that is your fresh frozen plasma or FFP, and that is also your uh, platelet concentrates. Person is referred to corporation, partnership, associations and organizations the cost means the actual price of unprocessed blood and its handling charges such as those for its collection processing 
storage, transportation, and sale, and a reasonable allowance for spoilage that is being discussed or described under the Section 2 of RA 1517. On the other hand, we have what we call in Section 3, no? it is clearly stated there that it is unlawful for any person uh, for any person to establish and operate blood bank or blood processing laboratory without the valid license or without the supervision of a physician. He cannot establish, they cannot establish, they cannot operate a blood bank if he is not a licensed physician. Okay? That is, that is clear. That is exactly what is written in the law. Okay, although workers in the blood banking or in the blood bank are medical technologists, but it must be supervised and it must be operated by a licensed physician. Well, of course, to be specific, a pathologist. But um, just to make it clear to everyone, the law does not specifically identify that it should be a pathologist. But in the practice of the Philippines, the one who operates, the one who manages, the one who heads the blood bank is no other than pathologist, since they are under the auspice or they are under the supervision of a pathologist. Now the question is, is it unlawful to sell blood and its products? I still remember uh, during the times or during the the COVID-19 pandemic, well, we are still naman in the COVID-19 pandemic. During the first months of the COVID-19 pandemic or during the ECQ, there was a post in the Facebook you know, asking for blood, asking for blood donors. Because during those times, there are, there, there's what we call shortage in the blood products. There is shortage in the blood units because they cannot perform mass blood donation. They have limited stocks of blood. Actually, in some blood banks, in some hospitals, they don't have already blood units. That's why, no, nahirap. There is a scarcity of a blood because of the COVID-19 pandemic. There was a question posted in the Facebook, uh, commented, being commented in that certain post, asking for someone who can donate. A question was, Andaya, not, not really a question, but a statement. Andaya ng PRC, ng Philippine Red Cross. We are donating our blood, pero ang mahal binebenta ng dugo. Many Filipinos who are uneducated, who are not knowledgeable about the law, about why there is a fee for blood units, commented no, in that post. Heart reaction. Hair reaction on that certain comment from unknown people. I don't know. I forgot the name. But is it unlaw unlawful to sell blood and its products? Okay. Actually, hindi. Hindi naman siya masama. Masama siya if you are going to sell blood and its products no, from one person to another person if you are not authorized to do that, or even though you are authorized to do that, but you don't have proper license to operate provided by the Department of Health, that is considered unlawful. Yes, sir. What's the answer in that question? Masama ba? Hindi. Hindi masamang may bayad ang blood. Because the actual price or the fees that we are paying, that you are paying for the blood products that you actually pay in PRC or in any other blood banks are just enough to sustain the needs of the laboratory to screen and to process blood units. In the, lot, in the later or in the succeeding slides, we'll also have a discussion for that. Now take note that in cases of emergency, Blood transfusion can be allowed or shall be allowed. Well, of course, it must be under the supervision of the attending physician, even without the license 
of a certain hospital to do blood banking because there is a need to do a blood transfusion. In emergency cases, that is allowed to do to process blood products even without a license to do that. Provided that there is an attending physician who will be responsible in overall processes. Okay? It is also stated in the law that, that the person operating the blood banks and other and blood processing laboratories on the date of the approval of this Republic Act may continue to operate the same if they will secure the license. What does it mean? If they don't have the license, they must, uh, they can, they can continue their, their procedures in blood banking provided that they will get or they will apply license to operate. Moving forward to Section 3, it is clearly stated there that no license shall be granted or renewed by the Department of Health for the establishment or operation of blood banks or blood processing laboratories unless such bank or laboratory be established and operated in accordance with accepted scientific standards is under the administration, direction, and supervision of a licensed and qualified physician. The blood is collected and or processed therein by a licensed physician or under the direct supervision and responsibility. It is clearly stated and a self-explanatory. Okay? But in the real situation, hindi naman talaga si physician ang nagpaprocess ng blood. It is the medical technologist, even without directly the supervision of a pathologist. It happens. Believe it. Okay? Now, Section 4, blood banks and processing laboratories shall be operated on a non-profit basis. O ngayon, sir, non-profit basis pala. Bakit nga may bayad? Take note. Take note. The, the, the fees that you are actually paying is for the processing and screening of the blood. It is clearly stated in the law that the blood collecting or processing by other blood collectors or processors or by individual physicians shall only be on a non-profit basis. If they are collecting fees, that is solely for the uh, screening, processing of blood. Now, blood should be, sh should be sold by such banks and laboratories over or other blood collectors or processes and individual physicians at a cost. And that cost must be approved by the Department of Health. Uh, there is a standard, standard laboratory, uh, standard price for blood products. 1,500 for whole blood and 1,800 for our fresh frozen plasma and even platelet concentrate, if I am not mistaken. Okay, that's the fixed price. Now, in order to enforce the law, RA 1517, no, in order to enforce the law, RA 1517, the Department of Health or the Secretary of Health is the one in charge or is the one in charge with full responsibility of strictly enforcing the law. And the Secretary of Health, no, is also capable of issuing rules and regulations no, that is necessary in the implementation of the act. And lastly, if you found to be guilty by uh, violating the law, any person who violates the provision of RA 1517 may be punishable under the law. Okay, You can be in prison for not less than one month, nor more than one year, or fine of not less than 100 pesos, nor more than 1,000 pesos. Or you can be, you can have the penalty 
penalty of imprisonment and at the same time the the fine depending on the desertion of the court now moving forward to our topic to the heart of our discussion for today which is republic act 7719 also known as the an act promoting voluntary blood donation take note of the word voluntary blood donation providing for an adequate supply of safe blood safe blood regulating blood banks and providing penalties for violation thereof this is actually a union of senate bill 879 and house bill 1011 republic act 7719 is commonly referred as the national blood services act this law aims to phase out all commercial blood banks that aims to get or that aims to have a high profit this law also aims to promote voluntary blood donation and the free importation of blood uh, blood bank materials and equipment being used in the processing of blood products being used in the processing of blood now 7719 no the that section one is definitely the title section two is the declaration of the policies and section three is the definition of terms being used in the law now i'm going to skip into the title because you already know what is section one i'm going to discuss a section two which is the declaration of policies and i'm going to interpret it in the way that you will understand why we have this kind why we have this kind of law okay number one or letter a to promote and encourage voluntary blood donation by the citizenry and instill public consciousness of the principle that blood donation is a humanitarian act okay that's the, the heart of this law in promote voluntary blood services voluntary blood donation you are going to donate blood because you we are willing to donate freely without any uh, anything in return. Okay. I still remember when when my niece needs uh, blood because of her condition, having a acute myelocytic leukemia. Okay. Even though that I have. I know I know a lot of people working in the blood bank, but since during those times last year, we are in the pandemic. Mahirap talaga makahanap ng blood. Buti na lang, there are people, there are people who are willing to donate their blood, and that is the heart, and that is the purpose of RA seven seven one nine. Kasi nga ano yung sabi natin kanina. It aims to phase out commercial blood banks that pays that pay no people who are donating blood. Next one is to lay down the legal principle that the provision of blood for transfusion is a professional medical service and not a sale of a commodity. Okay, that's a medical service, not a sale of a commodity. Kasi ngayon yung nangyari before eh. Pag-donate ko lang, mag-donate ulit ako. Kasi may bayad. That's why, <clears throat> excuse me, if you are going to donate blood and if you experience this, one of the question is, kayo po ba, I volunteer? Are you, I volunteer? Or, <laughs> are you going to receive anything in return? Yun, yun, tanong. Diba one of the questions is that question. Okay. To provide for adequate, safe, affordable, and equitable distribution of blood, supply of blood and blood products. Adequate, safe. Because we have to screen. Because blood, as we all know, blood is our, our blood is considered as a a sterile body fluid, even though that is considered a sterile body fluid, 
it is not resistant to contamination. As the universal precaution says, treat all body fluids, including the blood, as potentially carrier of infectious agents. That's why we have to process in order to ensure that there is a safe blood for blood transfusion. Adequate supply for distribution para walang kulangan, walang mamamatay dahil hindi agad nasalina ng dugo. Okay? To inform the public of the need of voluntary blood donation to curb the hazards caused by commercial sale of the blood. Lagi ko tong sinasabi at paulit-ulit ko nga, binebenta. Dahil binebenta, merong bayad. Dahil merong bayad, inaabuso. Letter E is to teach the benefits and rationale of voluntary blood donation in the existing health subjects of the formal education system in public and private schools, in elementary, high school, and college levels, as well as in non-formal education system. That's why schools are encouraging to donate blood. They are encouraged to foster blood donation. Kaya nga ibang schools, nag-undergo sila ng, ano, ng blood ng donation. Blood donation. Diba? Kasi it is here in the law. To mobilize the sector for of the community to participate in mechanisms for voluntary and non-profit collection of the blood. Local government units, NGOs, no, in cooperation and in collaboration in in blood co in in PBCC or PBCC and PNR uh, PRC. I mandate the department mandate the Department of Health to establish and organize a national blood transfusion services network in order to rationalize and improve the provision of adequate and safe supply. Meron parang networking ang lahat ng blood bank. That's why, let's say for example, in a certain hospital, wala silang blood available. Ano yung gagawin? Shall we wait until the patient deteriorates? Shall we wait until the patient die? No. If they require, if they need blood, and the hospital, where are you in? is not capable to give the blood for you. They are not blood bank. It is nor a blood center. The medical technologist, the responsibility of the medical technologist is to look for the available blood bank. That's why there is a blood bank network. He or she can call into other hospitals asking if they are available blood. Okay, and, and if that's so, and, and, and kapag nakakita ng available blood, then saka po nukukunin ng pasyente. Iko cross match in that certain hospital. Why we have to cross match? We have to make sure that the blood for transfusion is compatible. Why? Because if it's not compatible, it can cause clotting. That can cause, that can cause problem, another problem, another another health problem. Problema yun. Okay. We have to make sure that the donor and the donee is compatible. Hindi yun basta-basta isasalin. Okay. And you will, you will learn that in blood banking. It is also stated in the policy that to require all blood collection units and blood banks as well as centers to operate on a non-profit basis. To establish scientific and professional standards for the operation of blood collection units, blood banks, and blood bank, blood centers in the Philippines. To regulate and ensure the safety of all activities related to the collection, storage, and banking of blood. And lastly, to require upgrading of blood bank centers to include preventive services and education to control spread of blood transfusion transmissible diseases. That is the declaration of policy. 
Moving forward to Section 3, which is the definition of terms, it is clearly stated that the blood bank or blo uh, the blood and the blood products are blood coming from a human that can be processed or unprocessed. It includes the blood components, products, as well as its derivatives. Blood bank or blood center, on the other hand, is defined as the laboratory, which has the capacity to recruit, screen blood donors, collect, process, store, transport, and issue blood for transfusion. Blood center is different from blood collection unit. Okay? Commercial blood bank exists for profit. For profit. Kaya nga, ano yung sabi? Eliminate, phase out commercial blood banks. Hospital-based blood bank, wala naman po tayong freestanding blood bank except for Red Cross. Okay? Wala po tayong uh, again, freestanding laboratory, except eh, freestanding uh, blood bank except for Red Cross. A hospital-based blood bank from the world itself, the hospital-based and in the premises of the hospital. And they are capable of what we call compatibility testing or sometimes or commonly referred as our cross-matching. Like what I've said, collection unit or blood collection unit is authorized by the Department of Health for recruit and screen donors and collect. Okay. Voluntary blood donors, or is the one who donates blood voluntarily. Under the law, under 7719, they, uh, it, it, it uh, was able to define what is the blood transfusion transmissible diseases. They are AIDS, hepatitis B, A, malaria, and syphilis. Take note of this, guys. AIDS, hepatitis B, malaria, and syphilis. These are the blood-borne pathogens na ini-screen sa ating blood units. Now, remember, hepatitis B is being assessed or being tested. No, the presence of antigen sa dugo kung siya ba ay infected ng hepatitis or kung siya ba ay mayroong hepatitis B. Uh, sometimes, or the most common cause of hepatitis-related or hepatitis-related, uh, no, no, let me rephrase my statement. The most common cause of blood transfusion hepatitis-related or related hepatitis, ano bang bulo ko? How could I say this? Okay. The most common cause of blood transfusion related hepatitis is hepatitis C. Bakit? Hindi po kasi siya na screen And that is usually seen in plasma products. Most especially in fresh frozen plasma. Bakit? Fresh frozen plasma from the word itself, frozen, finifreeze. Kapag yung flavi virus finerase natin, na de deactivate yan. And once we to, when you said to, T-H-A-W, it means tinutunaw po natin yung red cells. Once we to the red cells, the hepatitis T virus or the flavi viridae, the flavi virus in the plasma products will be reactivated that can cause hepatitis related transfusion okay kasi hindi siya na-screen but nowadays there are some laboratories who are also screening hepatitis C walk uh, this is walk in hindi walking walk in blood donor is the one who is ready to donate blood when needed in his or her community now section 4 of the law is the promotion of voluntary blood donation, which is also included or stated in the principles or in the policy of this law. Okay? Now, how are we going to do the voluntary blood services? Uh, through education. Number one is public education. Okay? 
through an organized and sustained nationwide public education campaign to be headed by, of course, the Department of Health, Philippine National Red Cross, the Philippine Blood Banking Co Blood, Blood Coordinating Council, other go government agencies, local government units, including the barangay, non-government organizations or NGOs, medical organizations, public and private hospitals, health and other health-related institutions, including uh, schools offering allied profession, and of course, print and uh, broadcast media. Okay? These organizations or these institutions has the capability to organize a sustainable nationwide campaign about blood donation. Promotion in schools, you know, the benefit and the rationale of voluntary blood donation, emphasis in health subjects. Well, of course, since we are in the field of medicine, we are in the field of allied medicine, and you are a medical technologist, you are all familiar that our school is capable or our school is conducting yearly or annually a blood services or blood mass blood donation. Moving forward, these are the professional organizations that can encourage the conduct for their respective members and part of their continuing medical education trainings on the rationale, no? on the rationale use or on the rational use of blood and blood products, including the merits of voluntary blood donation. Yes. Is donating blood considered uh, essential? Yes. No, essential siya. Importante siya. Nakakatulong ba siya sa katawan? O naman. Okay. Now, what are these professional organizations that can encourage the conduct of their respective members to do the blood donation? Well, of course, the Department of Health, the Philippine Blood Coordinating Council, the Philippines, the Philippine Society of Hematology and Blood Transfusions, the Philippine Society of Pathologists, the Philippine Society or the Philippine Medical Association, the Philippine Association of Medical Technologists, and the Philippine Association or the Philippine Nurses Association or the PNA. They are the professional organizations that can encourage you know, the conduct of voluntary blood donation. Okay. The establishment of blood bank services or blood bank a blood services network, you no, know, is to have a strategist uh, to have, you no, know, a network in every province or city within the framework of the National Blood Transfusion Services Network, spearheaded by the Department of Health, in coordination to PNRC. Okay. The collection of blood in various areas in the community, such as schools, businesses, enterprises, barangays, and military camps shall be promoted. For what? For continuous supply of blood units. Section 5 of the law states that the department, in cooperation with the PNRC and PBCC and other government agencies, as well as non-government organizations shall plan and implement national voluntary blood services program. And under this law, then the fund that will the fund for the national voluntary blood services program may be coming from the PCSO, which amount to 25 million pesos, as well as from FOGCOR or the Philippine Amusement Games. No which amounts to 25, 000, 25 million also, and from duty-free Philippines, which accounts to 20 million pesos. This is the budget. No? Dito nang gagaling yung budget for the National Voluntary Blood Services Program. Okay? And also, no, uh, for the upgrading of services and facilities, Health services such as education and counseling on blood transmission, transmissible diseases, no government hospitals, 
are, take note, government hospitals are required to establish voluntary blood donation programs while private hospitals are encouraged to do that. When I was an intern in Batangas Medical Center, every month, every week, there is a blood donation, mass blood donation in different cities, in different municipalities, in different institutions in collaboration with the hospital to promote Voluntary blood services. Ano bang mapapala mo dyan kapag nag-donate ka ng dugo? May pakain. Diba? Yun yung mapapala mo dun. Eh, wala namang bayad. Okay lang yun. Kasi yung dugo mo pwede bumuhay dun sa taong nangangailangan. Yun yung bayad dun. Okay? Section 7 of the law aims to phase out the commercial blood bank. Yun na yung yun. Yun yung mahalaga dun. Section 8 of the law uh, non-profit operation. Yan. The establishment of blood banks, blood centers is for non-profit organization or non-profit operation. All blood banks, centers shall operate on a non-profit basis. Ulitin natin. Non-profit basis. I repeat. Non-profit basis. Now, the question, eh, bakit may bayad ang blood? No? Pagaya ng sinabi ko sa inyo, the blood, you will have to pay the fees for blood because it is clearly stated in the law. And I quote, provided that they may collect service fee, take note, service fee that is not greater than the maximum prescribed by the department. And that is true to all blood banks. Para para sila ng presyo. Okay? Provided that may collect service fee. Hindi sinabing bawal. They may collect fee that is intended for the processing, collecting, and screening of blood. Bakit? Kung hindi nila ipaprocess, ano yung mangyayari doon sa blood? Blood, bank is, blood bugs is a cost to blood banks. But it's an expenses for them. It costs much. Mahal din yan. Kung walang babayad sa kanila to 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 sustain their financial needs para sa reagents, para sa blood bank, para sa pagkain na kinakain ng mga donors, how can they survive? ba? Yun yung sagot. Bakit may bayad? That bayad is not actually bayad. That is a service fee for processing, collecting, and screening of blood and other expenses of blood bank. Please make, take note of it. Please, para maluwanag sa atin. And kindly educate the people around you. Kindly inform them. It is not because for us. It is not because for medical technologists, but for the services. Well, of course, no? kailangan nila yan to sustain their operation, operational needs. Kasi kung wala, sila kukuha. They are non-profitable organization. The payment that we are paying is actually for the blood, not for the organization. Now, such, it, is, it is clearly stated in Section 9 that it is it shall be unlaw, unlawful for any person to establish and operate blood bank or blood center unless it is registered and issued a license to operate by the Department of Health. Section 10 is all about the importation of blood bank equipment, blood bags, and reagents. Ay, sir, yan naman pala eh. Ay, bakit may bayad pa din? Kailangan pa ding magbayad. Kasi ano lang yung sinasabi dito? All equipment 
blood bags reagents used for screening and testing of blood donors from other countries shall be tax free hindi sinabing free tax free lang yung importation of blood bank equipment blood bags and reagents tax free hindi sinabing free Okay, so these are the concluding parts of the RA7719. So we have Section 11, the rules and regulations. Section 12 is the penalties. Section 13 is the separability clause. Section 14 is the repealing clause. And Section 15 is the effectivity clause. For the penalties, no, any person who shall be responsible for the violation of the law. Anong sabi doon? Uh, any blood bank or any blood bank center which shall collect charges or fees greater than the maximum prescribed by the department shall have its license suspended or revoked by the secretary. What else? Any person who shall be responsible for the violation of the law may be in prison for not less than one month nor more than six months and could have a fine of not less than 5000 nor more than 50,000. Now, how about those who are operating without securing license to operate? They can be in prison for not less than 12 months and one day, nor more than 20 years, or a fine of not less than 50,000, nor more than 500,000 or both. Okay. On the concluding part of the penalty, there was a provision stating that the head of the blood bank and the necessary trained per personnel under the head's direct supervision who are found to be responsible for dispensing, transfusing, and failing to dispose within 48 hours blood which have been proven contaminated with blood transfusion transmissible diseases shall be in prison for 10 years. It is. This is without the prejudice to the filing of the criminal charges under the revised penal code of the Philippines. Aba, eh bakit ka naman magta-transfuse? No, may shelf life lang din ang ating mga blood and the blood products, usually 45 days, depending on the anticoagulant being used. It's for the red cells, for the whole blood. For platelet concentrates, 5 days. For fresh frozen plasma, yan, matagal, one year. But if you are going to transfuse that at contaminated yan, you are liable under the law and you can be in prison for 10 years because of your negligence. Additional information, we have what we call Administrative Order Number 2008, Series of 008A, which ensures the accredited blood services facilities with adequate staff, personal equipment to perform all the functions effectively, safely, and efficiently for the protection and the promotion of the health of the people. And under this administrative order, it defines what is blood station. When we said that <clears throat> blood station, it is capable of the advocacy and promotion of the voluntary blood donation and healthy lifestyle, the provision of whole blood and pop RBC, storage, issuance, transport, and distribution of whole blood and pop red cells, as well as compatibility testing of red cell units if hospital based. How about blood collection unit? Again, the advocacy and promotion of voluntary blood donation and lifestyle is always there. Recruitment, retention, and care of voluntary donors. Screening and collect uh, se selection of voluntary donors, conduct health, education, and counseling services, transport blood to blood center for testing and processing, compatibility testing of red cell units if hospital based, collection of blood to a mobile or based, and transport of blood to blood center for testing. Paulit-ulit ako doon sa part na yun. I'm sorry. Okay? So, blood bank is capable of storage issuance of blood, full blood, and blood components obtained from 
whole blood. Take note guys that blood bank is capable of performing compatibility testing, direct comb, red cell antibody screening, investigations of transfusion reactions, assist the hospital-based transfusion committee in the conduct of post-transfusion surveillance. And lastly, we have here the blood center who is capable of recruitment, retention, and care of voluntary blood donors, collection of the blood, conduct health education and counseling, testing of units of blood for transfusion transmissible diseases or infections, processing and provisions of blood components, as well as storage, transport, and distribution of units of whole blood and blood products to hospital and other facilities. And that is all about RA-1517 and RA-7719. And thank you very much. Do not forget to scan the code, the code and give your evaluation. I hope you learn and understand what is the purpose of RA-7719 and 1517. Thank you and God bless us all.